Section 1 of the Italian Cookbook. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Diana Meulinger. The Italian Cookbook, The Art of Eating Well, by Maria Gentile. Preface. One of the beneficial results of the Great War has been the teaching of thrift to the American housewife. For patriotic reasons and for reasons of economy, more attention has been bestowed upon the preparing and cooking of food that is to be at once palatable, nourishing, and economical. In the Italian cuisine, we find in the highest degree these three qualities. That it is palatable, all those who have partaken of food in an Italian trattoria or at the home of an Italian family can testify. That it is healthy, the splendid manhood and womanhood of Italy is a proof more than sufficient. And who could deny, knowing the thriftiness of the Italian race, that it is economical? It has therefore been thought that a book of practical recipes of the Italian cuisine could be offered to the American public with hope and success. It is not a pretentious book, and the recipes have been made as clear and simple as possible. Some of the dishes described are not peculiar to Italy. All, however, are representative of the cucina casalingua of the peninsular kingdom, which is not the least product of a lovable and simple people, among whom the art of living well and getting the most out of life at a moderate expense has been attained to a very high degree. 1. Broth or soup stock. Brodo. To obtain good broth, the meat must be put in cold water, and then allowed to boil slowly. Add to the meat some pieces of bones and soup greens, as, for instance, celery, carrots and parsley. To give a brown color to the broth, some sugar, first browned at the fire, then diluted in cold water, may be added. While it is not considered that the broth has much nutritive power, it is excellent to promote the digestion. Nearly all the Italian soups are made on a basis of broth. A good recipe for substantial broth to be used for invalids is the following. Cut some beef in thin slices and place them in a large saucepan. Add some salt. Pour cold water upon them, so that they are entirely covered. Cover the saucepan, so that it is hermetically closed, and place on the cover a receptacle containing water, which must be constantly renewed. Keep on a low fire for six hours, then on strong fire for ten minutes. Strain the liquid in cheesecloth. The soup stock, besides being used for soups, is a necessary ingredient in hundreds of Italian dishes. 2. Soup of Capelletti This soup is called of Capelletti, or little hats, on account of the shape of the Capelletti. First, a thin sheet of paste is made according to the following directions. The best and most tender paste is made simply of eggs, flour and salt. Water may be substituted for part of the eggs for economy, or when a less rich paste is needed. Allow about a cup of flour to an egg. Put the flour on a breadboard, make a hollow in the middle, and break in the egg. Use any extra whites that are left on hand. Knead it thoroughly, adding more flour if necessary, until you have a paste you can roll out. Roll it as thin as an eighth of an inch. A long rolling pin is necessary, but any stick, well scrubbed and sandpapered, will serve in lieu of the long Italian rolling pin. Cut from this sheet of paste rounds, measuring about three inches in diameter. In the middle of each circle, place a spoonful of filling that must be made beforehand, composed of cooked meat, chicken, pork or veal, ground very fine, and seasoned with grated cheese, grated lemon peel, nutmeg, allspice, salt. The ground meat is to be mixed with an equal amount of curds or cottage cheese. When the filling is placed in the circle of paste, fold the latter over and moisten the edge of the paste with the finger dipped in water to make it stay securely closed. These capelletti should be cooked in chicken or beef broth until the paste is tender and served with this broth as a soup. 3. Bread soup. Panata. This excellent and nutritious soup is a godsend for using the stale bread that must never be again thrown away. It is composed of bread crumbs and grated bread, eggs, grated cheese, nutmeg in very small quantity, and salt, all mixed together and put in broth previously prepared which must be warm at the moment of the immersion, but not at the boiling point. Then place it on a low fire and stir gently. Any vegetable left over may be added. 4. Gnocchi 
This is an excellent soup, but as it requires boiled or roast breast of chicken or turkey, it is well to make it only when these ingredients are handy. Prepare a certain quantity of boiled potatoes, the mealy kind being preferred. Mash the potatoes and mix them with chicken or turkey breast well ground, grated cheese, parmesan or swiss, two or more yolks of eggs, salt and a small quantity of nutmeg. Pour the compound on the breadboard with a quantity of flour sufficient to make a paste and roll it in little sticks as thick as the small finger. Cut the sticks in little pieces about half an inch long and put them in boiling water. Five or six minutes cooking will be sufficient. 5. Vegetable soup. Zuppa sante. Any kind of vegetables may be used for this soup. Carrots, celery, cabbage, turnips, onions, potatoes, spinach, the outside leaves of lettuce or greens of any variety. Select three or four kinds of vegetables, shred and chop coarsely cabbage or greens, and slice or cut in cubes the root vegetables. Put them over the fire with a small quantity of cooking oil or butter substitute, and let them fry until they have absorbed the fat. Then add broth and cook until the vegetables are very tender. Fry croutons of stale bread in oil and serve them in the soup. 6. Queen's Soup Zuppa Regina this is made with the white meat of chicken, which is to be ground in a meat grinder, together with blanched almonds, five or six, for one quart of chicken stock. To the meat and almond, add some bread crumbs, first soak in milk or broth, in the proportion of about one-fifth of the quantity of the meat. All these ingredients are to be rubbed to a very smooth paste, and hot broth is to be added to them. If you wish the soup to be richer and have a more milky consistency, Use the yolk of an egg, which should be beaten, and have a few tablespoonsful of hot broth stirred into it before adding to the soup. Do not let the soup boil after the egg is added, or it will curdle. One slice of stale bread may be cut into cubes, fried in deep fat, and the croutons put in the soup. Send it to the table with a dish of grated cheese. 7. Bean Soup Zuppa di fragioli One cup of dried beans, kidney, navy or lima is to be soaked overnight, then boil until tender. It is preferable to put the beans to cook in cold water with a pinch of soda. When they come to boil, pour off the water and add fresh. Chop fine a quarter of an onion, one clove of garlic, one sprig of parsley and one piece of celery and put them to fry in a quarter of a cup of oil with salt and generous amount of pepper. When the vegetables are a delicate brown, Add to them two cups of the broth from the beans, and one cup of tomatoes, canned or fresh. Let all come to a boil, and pour the mixture into the kettle of beans, from which some of the water has been drained, if they are very liquid. This soup may be served as it is, or rubbed through a sieve before serving. Croutons or triangles of dry toast make an excellent addition. The bean soup is made without meat or chicken broth, and it belongs consequently to that class of soup called by the Italians minestra di magro, or lean soup, to be served preferably on Friday or other days in which the Roman Catholic Church prohibits the use of meat. 8. Lentil soup Zuppa di lenticche The lentil soup is prepared in the same way as the bean soup, only substituting lentils for beans. A good combination is that of lentils and rice. The nutritive qualities of the lentils are not sufficiently known in this country, but all books of dietetics speak very highly of them. 9. Vegetable Chowder Minestrona alla Milanese Cut off the rind of half a pound of salt pork and put it into two quarts of water to boil. Cut off a small slice of the pork and beat it to a paste with two or three sprigs of parsley, a little celery and one kernel of garlic. Add this paste to the pork and water. Slice two carrots, cut the rib out of the leaves of a quarter medium sized cabbage. Add the carrots, cabbage leaves, other vegetables, seasoning and butter to the soup and let it boil slowly for two and a half hours. The last half hour, add one small handful of rice for each person. When the pork is very soft, remove and slice in little ribbons and put it back. The minestrone is equally good eaten cold. 10. Ravioli Put on the breadboard about two pounds of flour in a heap, make a hollow in the middle, and put in it a piece of butter, 
three egg yolks, salt, and three or four tablespoonsful of lukewarm water. Make a paste and knead it well. Then let it stand for an hour, wrapped or covered with a linen cloth. Then spread the paste to a thin sheet, as thin as a ten-cent piece. Chop and grind pieces of roast or boiled chicken meat. Add to it an equal part of marrow from the bones of beef and pieces of brains, three yolks, some crumbs of bread soaked in milk or broth, and some grated cheese, parmesan or swiss. Rub through a sieve and make little balls as big as a hazelnut, which are to be placed at equal distances, a little more than an inch, in a line over the sheet of paste. Beat a whole egg and pass it over the paste with a brush all around the little balls. Cover these with another sheet of paste. Press down the intervals between each ball, and then separate each section from the other with a knife. Moisten the edges of each section with the finger dipped in cold water, to make them stick together, and press them down with the fingers or the prongs of a fork. Then put to boiling water seasoned with salt, or better still, in broth. The ravioli are then to be served hot, seasoned with cheese and butter, or with brown stock or tomato sauce. 11. Pavis Soup Zuppa alla pavese. Cut as many thin slices of bread as are needed in order that each person may have at least two of them. These slices are then to be toasted and browned with butter. Poach two eggs for each person, one on each slice of bread, and place the slices on a large and deep dish, not in a soup tureen. Pour hot broth in the plate, taking care not to break the eggs, season with parmesan or Swiss cheese, and serve. End of section 1 Cookbook by Maria Gentile This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Paste Spaghetti, macaroni, etc. Pasta asciutta The Italians serve the spaghetti or macaroni at the beginning of the meal, in place of soup, and they give it the name of minestra asciutta or dry soup. Besides the familiar spaghetti, the paste is served in many other forms and with different seasoning. This is by far the most popular Italian dish, and it seems to have pleased the taste of all the peoples of the earth. The highly nutritive qualities of spaghetti and of cheese, their indispensable condiment, have been recognized by all diet authorities, and as for its palatableness, the lovers of spaghetti are just as enthusiastic and numerous outside of Italy as within the boundaries of that blessed country. The most popular seasoning for spaghetti are tomato sauce, brown stock, and anchovy sauce. The description of these three condiments follows. 12. Tomato sauce. Salsa di pomidoro. Chop together, fine, one quarter of an onion, a clove of garlic, a piece of celery as long as your finger, a few bay leaves, and just enough parsley. Season with a little oil, salt and pepper. Cut up seven or eight tomatoes and put everything over the fire together. Stir it from time to time, and when you see the juice condensing into a thin custard, strain through a sieve and it is ready for use. When fresh tomatoes are not available, the tomato paste may be used. This is a concentrated paste made from tomatoes and spices which is to be had at all Italian grocers, now so numerous in all American cities. Thinned with water, it is a much-used ingredient in Italian recipes. Ketchup and concentrated tomato soup do not make satisfactory substitutes, as they are too sweet in flavor. Of course, canned tomatoes seasoned with salt and a bit of bay leaf can always be used instead of fresh tomatoes. This sauce serves many purposes. It is good on boiled meat, excellent to dress macaroni, spaghetti or other pastes which have been seasoned with butter and cheese or on boiled rice, seasoned in the same way. See risotto. Mushrooms are a fine addition to it. When using concentrated paste, the following recipes will be found to give good results. Chop one onion, one carrot, and a celery stalk. Form a little bunch of parsley and other aromatic greens, and put everything to brown in a saucepan together with a piece of butter. Add a reasonable portion of tomato paste while cooking, stir and keep on a low fire, until the sauce assumes the necessary consistency. 13. Brown stock. Sugo di carne. Cover the bottom of a saucepan with thin slices of beef taken from a juicy cut and small pieces of salt pork. Place over a large onion, one carrot, 
and a stalk of celery, all chopped in small pieces. Add some butter and cover the whole with any trimmings from the steaks or roasts, and any bit of leftover cooked meat. Season with salt and cloves. Put over the fire without stirring. When you smell the onions getting very brown, turn the meat, and when everything is quite brown, add a cup of water, renewing the latter three times. Finally add a certain quantity of boiling water, or, better still, of broth, and let it boil gently five or six hours. Strain, cool, and skim off the fat, which will form a cake on top of the liquid. The meat can be used afterward for meatballs or croquettes. The stock may be kept for some days, and forms the basis for many dishes. 14. Anchovy sauce. Salsa da chuge. This recipe does not call for the fillets of anchovies prepared for hors d'oeuvre, but the less expensive and larger whole anchovies in salt to be had in bulk or cans at large dealers. Wash them thoroughly in plenty of water. Remove head, tail, backbone and skin, and they are ready for use. Put five or six anchovies into a colander, and dip quickly into boiling water to loosen the skins. Remove the salt, skin, and bone them. Chop them and put them over the fire in a saucepan with a generous quantity of oil and some pepper. Do not let them boil, but when they are hot, add two tablespoons of butter and three or four tablespoons of concentrated tomato juice made by cooking down canned tomatoes and rubbing through a sieve. When this sauce is used to season spaghetti, these must be boiled in water that is only slightly salted, and care must be taken not to let them become too soft. The quantities above mentioned ought to be sufficient for about one pound of spaghetti. 15. Spaghetti or macaroni with butter and cheese. Pasta al burro e formaggio. This is the simplest form in which the spaghetti may be served, and it is generally reserved for the thickest paste. The spaghetti are to be boiled until tender in salted water taking care to remove them when tender, and not cooked until they lose form. They should not be put into the water until this is at a boiling point. Take as much macaroni as will half fill the dish in which it is to be served. Break into pieces two and a half to three inches long, if you so desire. The Italians leave them unbroken, but their skill in turning them around the fork and eating them is not the privilege of everybody. Put the macaroni into salted boiling water, and boil 12 to 15 minutes, or until the macaroni is perfectly soft. Stir frequently to prevent the macaroni from adhering to the bottom. Turn it into a colander to drain. Then put it into a pudding dish with a generous quantity of butter and grated cheese. If more cheese is liked, it can be brought to the table, so that the guests can help themselves to it. The macaroni called mezzani, which is a name designating size, not quality, is the preferable kind for macaroni dishes made with butter and cheese. 16. Macaroni with sauce. Macaroni al sugo. The most appreciated kind of macaroni are those seasoned with tomato sauce or with brown stock. See numbers 12 and 13. The macaroni are boiled as above, then drained in a colander, turned to the saucepan, and mixed with the sauce and grated cheese. For those who like it, some butter may be added in the mixing. 17. Macaroni with anchovy sauce. Macaroni con salsa d'acciughe. After the paste is drained thoroughly, it is to be put into the hot dish in which it is to be served, and the anchovy sauce poured over it, and well mixed with two silver forks until the sauce has gone all through it. Some olive oil may be added, but grated cheese is not generally used with the anchovy sauce. 18. Macaroni alla corina. Maccheroni alla corina. Put on the fire a pot with two quarts of salted water, to which add a small piece of butter. When it begins to boil, put in it three quarters of a pound of macaroni. Let it boil for five minutes, then drain them in a colander. Put them again in new boiling water, prepared as above, and let them cook on a slow fire. Drain them again. Cover the bottom of a plate with macaroni, and cover this first layer with grated cheese, and with some vegetables in macedoine, that is, chopped fine and fried brown with butter. Repeat the draining, moisten the macaroni with the water in which they have previously cooked, and keep on a low fire for ten minutes more. The macedoine of vegetables can be made with a dozen Brussels sprouts, or one cabbage, half a dozen big asparagus cut in little pieces, a carrot cut in thin slices, a dozen small onions, some turnips, 
and half a dozen mushrooms. The mushrooms and the asparagus can be omitted. Melt some butter in a saucepan, and when the turnips, the carrots, and the onions are half cooked, add the cabbage or sprouts. Put in some water, and some more butter. Boil for ten minutes, and then add the mushrooms and the asparagus, adding salt and pepper, and a little sugar, if this is desired. 19. Macaroni au gratin Macaroni al gratin Boil the macaroni in salted water until tender and drain them. Butter slightly a fireproof casserole, and lay on the bottom some grated cheese and grated bread. Alternate the layers of cheese with macaroni, and on the top layer of macaroni, put more cheese and bread grated. Over the whole pour some melted butter, cover the casserole, or pyrex plate, and put in the oven with a low fire. Keep for ten minutes or more, until the top appears browned. 20. Macaroni Napoletane Macaroni alla Napoletana Grind a quarter of a pound of salt pork or bacon, and fry it out in a saucepan. While it is frying, put one small onion through the grinder. As soon as the pork begins to brown, add the onion, the parsley chopped, a clove or small section of garlic shredded fine, and a few dried mushrooms which have been softened by soaking in warm water. When the vegetables are very brown, great care must be taken not to burn the onion, which scorches very easily. Add half a pound of round steak, ground coarsely, or cut up in little cubes. When the meat is a good brown color, add some fresh or canned tomatoes, or half a tablespoonful of tomato paste, and simmer slowly, until all has cooked down to a thick, creamy sauce. It will probably take three quarters of an hour. The sauce may be bound together with a little flour, if it shows a tendency to separate. This sauce is used to dress all kinds of macaroni and spaghetti, also for boiled rice. See risotto. The macaroni or spaghetti should be left unbroken when cooked. If they are too long to fit in the kettle, immerse one end in the boiling salted water, and in a very few minutes the ends of the spaghetti under the water will become softened, so that the rest can be pushed down into the kettle. Be careful not to overcook it, and it will not be pasty, but firm and tender. Drain it carefully, and put in a hot soup tureen. Sprinkle a handful of grated cheese over it, and pour on the sauce. Lift with two forks until thoroughly mixed. End of section 2 The Italian Cookbook by Maria Gentile. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 21. Macaroni fried with oil. Macaroni all'olio. After the macaroni have boiled, drain them and put them in a saucepan in which some good olive oil has already boiled, with a clove of garlic chopped fine. Let the paste fry, taking care that it doesn't stick to the bottom of the saucepan, and when it is well browned on one side, Turn it to have the other side browned. Serve the macaroni very hot. Add no cheese. 22. Risotto Milanese Risotto alla Milanese Melt a small piece of butter in a saucepan. Brown in the butter a medium-sized onion, cut in thin slices. When the onion is browned, take it away from the saucepan and add little by little the rice, stirring it with a wooden spoon. Every time that the rice becomes dry, Add some hot broth or hot water, until the rice is completely cooked. Add salt and pepper and a little saffron if you like it. When the rice is almost cooked, add to it some brown stock, dress with parmesan cheese and some butter. Mix well and serve hot. This dish must not be allowed to be overcooked or cooled before eating. 23. Risotto with chicken giblets Risotto alla milanese due the broth for this risotto may be made by cooking together the giblets, neck and tips of wings of a chicken which is to be roasted, or it may be made from the leftovers of roast fowl. Boil the rice until it is about half done in salted water, then let the water cook away and begin adding the broth in such quantity that the rice will be nearly dry when it is tender. Fry one chopped onion in the oil or fat. Some mushrooms cut up small are very good addition to this soffritto. Mince the chicken giblets and add to the onion. Stir the mixture into the rice. Add grated cheese and a beaten egg just as the rice is taken from the fire. 24. Risotto with peas. 
Risotto con pizzelli. Wash and dry one and a half pound of rice. Chop fine one medium-sized onion and put it on the fire with a small quantity of butter. When the onion is well browned, add the rice little by little, stirring with a wooden spoon. Add some boiling water, one cup at a time. Drain the peas previously prepared, fresh or canned peas may be used, and add them toward the end of the cooking. When the whole is almost cooked, add some salt and take it away from the water almost dry. Add some butter, stir, and serve hot. 25. Risotto with lobster. Risotto coi gamberi. For this risotto, either lobster or crab meat can be used. The former is, however, considered more tasty. The lobster or crab meat ought to be about half the weight of the rice employed, a little more than a pound of rice, and half this weight of crab meat ought to be enough for six persons. Chop fine a sprig of parsley, a stalk of celery, one carrot, half an onion, a club of garlic, and brown the whole in good olive oil. When browned, add the crab meat and season with salt and pepper. During the cooking process, stir and turn over the crabs, and when they have become red, pour over as much hot water as is necessary to cook the rice. After the water boils for a while, remove the lobster, or crab, or crawfish, leaving the saucepan on the fire. Put half of the crabs aside, and grind the rest. Rub the ground meat through the sieve, and put it back on the fire. In another saucepan, melt some butter, and put into it little by little the rice that has been washed and dried. Stir and add the broth from the first saucepan. When the rice is almost cooked, add the crawfish that you have put aside, or rather its meat extracted from the shells. Take from the fire, and pour over it the fish mixture, adding some grated cheese. 26. Rice with saffron riso alla milanese con zafferano wash and dry the rice and put in it boiling broth beef or chicken broth when the rice is half cooked add half its weight of marrow of beef bone cut into small pieces a few minutes are sufficient for the cooking of the marrow add grated cheese and remove the kettle from the fire dissolve some saffron in one or two tablespoonsful of broth sift it through a sieve and mix with rice which is to be served very hot and makes an excellent soup. 27. Rice Cakes Fritella di riso Cook the rice in milk, adding a small quantity of butter, some salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, and just a taste of lemon peel. Let the rice cool down after being thoroughly cooked, then add three yolks of eggs, for a quarter of a pound of rice, and some flour. Mix well, and let the whole rest for several hours. When about to fry, Beat the white of the eggs to a froth, add to the rice mixing slowly, and put into the saucepan with a ladle. 28. Fried Artichoke Carciofi fritti Take two artichokes, cut out the hard part of the leaves and of the stalk, cut them in two. Then cut these halves into section or slices, so as to have eight or ten for each artichoke, according to size. As you cut them, throw them into cold water, and when they are well washed, Dry them, but not thoroughly, putting them at once into the flour, so that the latter remains attached to it. Beat the white of an egg, but not to a froth, then mix the yolk with the white, and salt the whole. Shake out the artichokes to take away the superfluous flour, and then put them in the egg, leaving them for a while, so that the egg may be attached to them. Throw the pieces one by one into the pan where there is boiling fat, butter or olive oil, and when they are well browned, take them away and serve with lemon. If it is desired that the artichokes remain white, it is better to fry them in oil, and to squeeze half lemon into the water where the artichokes are put to soften. 29. Steamed Artichokes Carciofi a vapore Artichokes have been only recently imported to the United States, principally by Italian farmers, and they are just beginning to find their way into the American kitchen. The artichokes may be eaten raw or cooked, it is a healthy and palatable vegetable, easily digested when cooked. It is nutritious and adapted for convalescence. It may be prepared in a thousand ways, and here follow some of the simplest and most tasteful. To prepare the steamed artichokes, they must first be cleaned, and the stalk cut to less than half an inch. Put them in a saucepan, standing on their bottoms, one near the other, in half an inch or more of water. 
in an opening made in the middle put salt and pepper and pour inside as much good olive oil as they may contain cover well the saucepan and put it on fire the artichokes that are already seasoned will be cooked by the steam 30 stewed artichokes carciofi in stufato wash the artichokes and cut the hard part of the leaves the top Widen the leaves and insert a hash composed of breadcrumbs, parsley, salt, pepper, and oil. Place the artichokes in the saucepan standing on their stalk, one touching the other. Cover them with water and let them cook for two hours or more. When the leaves are easily detached, they are cooked. 31. Artichokes with butter. Carciofi al burro. Wash, dry, and cut out the top of the leaves of as many artichokes as are needed. Cut them in two or four, and boil them in salt water. When tender, drain them, have them slightly browned in melted butter, and season with salt and pepper. When served in a vegetable dish, or placed in a pyramid on a round plate, sprinkle with grated cheese. 32. Fried squash. Zucchine fritte. The squashes used by Italians for frying and other purposes are very small, and for this reason they are called zucchine, or small squashes. They can be bought at those shops kept by Italian vegetable dealers that are now to be found in large number in most American cities and invariably in Italian neighborhoods during the summer season. The zucchine are an extremely tasty vegetable and they are especially good when fried. Select the squashes that are long and thin. Wash them, cut them in little strips less than half an inch thick. Take away the softer part of the interior and salt moderately. Leave them aside for an hour or two, then drain them, but don't dry them. Put them in flour and rub gently in a sieve to take away the superfluous flour. Immediately after, put them in a saucepan where there is already oil, fat or butter boiling. At the beginning, don't touch them to avoid breaking, and only when they have become a little hardened, stir them and remove when they begin to be browned. End of section 3 of the italian cookbook by maria gentile this librivox recording is in the public domain thirty three lamb omelette agnello in frittata cut in little pieces a loin of lamb which is the part that lends itself best for this dish and fry in lard a little quantity of lard is sufficient because the meat of the loins is rather fat when half cooked season with salt and pepper and when fully cooked pour over four or five whole eggs slightly beaten also seasoned moderately with salt and pepper mix taking care that the eggs do not harden thirty four fried chicken pollo fritto wash a spring chicken and keep in boiling water for one minute cut into pieces at the joints roll them in flour season with salt and pepper and dip in two whole beaten eggs after leaving the pieces of chicken for half an hour roll them in bread crumbs repeating the operation twice if necessary put into a saucepan with boiling oil or fat seeing that the pieces of chicken are well browned on both sides keep the fire low serve hot with lemon 35 chicken alla cacciatora pollo alla cacciatora chop one large onion and keep it for more than half an hour in cold water then dry it and brown it aside Cut up a chicken, sprinkle the pieces with flour, salt and pepper and sauté in the fat which remains in the frying pan. When the chicken is brown, add one pint of fresh or canned tomatoes and half a dozen sweet green peppers and put back the onion. When the gravy is thick enough, add hot water to prevent the burning of the vegetables. Cover the pan tightly and simmer until the chicken is very tender. This is an excellent way to cook tough chickens. Fowls which have been boiled may be cooked in this way, but of course young and tender chickens will have the finer flavor. 36. Cornmeal with sausages. Polenta con salsicce. Cook in water one cup of yellow cornmeal making a stiff mush. Salt it well, and when it is cooked, spread out to cool on a breadboard about half an inch thick. Then cut the mush into small squares. Put in a saucepan several whole sausages with a little water, and when they are cooked, skin and crush them, and add some brown stock or tomato sauce. Put the polenta, or cornmeal mush, in a fireproof receptacle, season with grated cheese, 
the crushed sausages and a piece of butter. Put it in the oven and serve when hot. 37. Polenta pie. Polenta pasticciata. Make a very stiff mush of cornmeal cooked in milk. Salt it well and spread out on the breadboard in a sheet about one inch thick. When cold, cut in little diamonds or squares and place these in a buttered baking dish. Prepare the bolognese sauce according to the following recipe. Chop a quarter of a pound of round steak, a slice of pork or bacon, one small carrot, a quarter of an onion, one large piece of celery. Put the meat and vegetables over the fire with a piece of butter. When the meat has browned, add half a tablespoon of flour and wet the mixture with hot water or broth, allowing it to simmer from half an hour to an hour. It is done when it is the consistency of a thick gravy. Make a smooth white sauce with milk cornstarch and butter. Over a layer of the polenta, cut as above and placed in the baking dish, sprinkle some grated cheese and a few tablespoons each of the white sauce and the meat sauce. Repeat until the dish is full. Bake until the top is nicely browned. This dish seems very elaborate, but it is very delicious and the meal in itself. The bolognese sauce is also used to season macaroni or spaghetti in lieu of the tomato sauce or the brown stock. 38. Stuffed Rolls Pagnotelle ripiene Take some rolls and by means of a round opening on the top, as large as a half dollar piece or less, extract nearly all the crumb, leaving the crust intact, but not too thin. Wet inside and outside with hot milk, and when they are fairly soaked, dip in beaten egg and fry them in lard or oil. When beginning to brown, fill them with meat that has been previously chopped and cooked. This chopped meat ought to be made with breast of chicken, chicken giblets, liver, etc., brown stock and some flour to hold it together. 39. Stewed veal Stracotto di vitella The stock from this dish may very well be used to season macaroni or boiled rice. Care must be taken, however, not to draw away all the juice of the meat, in order to have a sauce too rich at the expense of the principal dish. Place in a saucepan one pound of veal or more, bone included, a piece of butter or some olive oil, or the two together, half a medium-sized onion, one small carrot, two celery stalks cut in small pieces. Season with salt and pepper. Put it on a low fire, turn the meat over often, and when browned, Add a pinch of flour and some tomato paste, bringing it to full cooking with water poured little by little. The flour is used to keep the sauce together and give it a color, but care must be taken not to burn it, because in that case the sauce would have an unpleasant taste and a black instead of a reddish color. The addition of dried mushrooms, previously softened in the water and slightly boiled in the sauce, will add greatly to its taste. As has been said, the sauce can well be used to season spaghetti or risotto, the stewed wheel can be served with some vegetable. 40. Chicken boned and stuffed. Pollo di sossato ripieno. To remove the bones from a chicken, the following instructions will be found useful. Wash and singe the fowl. Take off the head and legs and remove the tendons. When a fowl is to be boned, it is not drawn. The work of boning is not difficult, but it requires practice. The skin must be not broken. Use a small pointed knife, cut the skin down the full length of the back. Then, beginning at the neck, carefully scrape the meat away from the bone, keeping the knife close to the bone. When the joints of the wings and legs are met, break them back and proceed to free the meat from the carcass. When one side is free, turn the fowl and do the same on the other side. The skin is drawn tightly over the breastbone, and care must be used to detach it without piercing the skin. When the meat is free from the carcass, Remove the bones from the legs and wings, turning the meat down or inside out, as the bones are exposed, and using care not to break the skin at the joints. The end bones of the wing cannot be removed, and the whole end joint may be cut off or left as it is. Now that the fowl is boned, make the following stuffing, regulating the quantity on the sides of the chicken. Chop half a pound or more of lean wheel, and grind it afterwards, so that it may make a paste. Add a large piece of bread crumb soaked in broth, a tablespoon of grated cheese, three yolks of egg, salt, pepper, and, if desired, just a taste of nutmeg. Finally mix also one or two slices of ham and tongue, cut in small pieces. 
Stuff the boned chicken with this filling, sew up the opening, wrap it tightly in a cloth, and put the cooking water on a low fire. When taken from the water, remove the wrapping and brown it, first with butter, then in a sauce made in the following way. Break all the bones that have been extracted from the chicken, the head and the neck included, and put them on the fire with dried meat, cut in little pieces, butter, onion, celery and carrot, seasoned with salt and pepper. Make the sauce with the water in which the chicken has been boiled, which has naturally become a good chicken broth. Before sending to the table, remove the thread with which the chicken has been sewed. 41. Chicken with tomatoes. Pollo alla contadina. Take a young chicken and make some little holes in the skin, in which you will put some sprigs of rosemary and a clove of garlic cut into five or six pieces. Put it on the fire with chopped lard and season with salt and pepper inside and outside. When it is well browned on all parts, add tomatoes cut in pieces, taking care to remove previously all the seeds. Moisten with broth or water. Brown some potatoes in oil, fat or butter, previously cutting them into sections. When browned, dip in the sauce of the chicken and serve the whole together. 42. Chicken with sherry. Pollo al marsala. Cut the chicken in big pieces and put it in the saucepan with one medium-sized onion chopped fine and a piece of butter. Season with salt and pepper and, when it is well browned, add some broth and complete the cooking. Remove the excessive fat from the sauce by sifting through a sieve or otherwise and put the chicken back on the fire with a glass of sherry or marsala wine, removing it from the fire as soon as the sauce begins to boil. 43. Chicken with sausages. Pollo con la salsicce. Chop fine half an onion, and put it in a saucepan with a piece of butter, and four or five slices of ham, half an inch wide. Over these ingredients, place a whole chicken, season with pepper and a little salt, and place on the fire. Brown it on all sides, and, when the onion is all melted, add water or broth, and three or four sausages freshly made. Let it cook on a low fire, seeing that the sauce remains liquid, and does not dry up. 44. Chicken with egg sauce Pollo in salsa duova. Break into pieces a young chicken and put it in the saucepan with a piece of butter. Season with salt and pepper. When it is half browned, sprinkle with a pinch of flour to give it color, then complete the cooking with broth. Remove it from the same and put it on a plate. Beat the yolk of one egg with a piece of half a lemon and pour it on the sauce of the chicken, allowing it to simmer for some minutes. Then pour on the chicken and serve hot. 45. Chicken breast sautés. Petti di pollo alla sauté. Cut the breast of a fowl in very thin slices, give them the best possible shape, and make a whole piece from the little pieces that will remain, cleaning well the breastbone, crushing and mixing these. Season with salt and pepper, and dip the slices in beaten eggs, leaving them for a few hours. Sprinkle with breadcrumbs ground fine, and sauté in butter. Serve with lemon. If you want this dish more elaborate, prepare a sauce in the following way. Put some good olive oil in a frying pan, just enough to cover the bottom, and cover the oil with a layer of dry mushrooms. Sprinkle over a small quantity of grated cheese and some breadcrumbs. Repeat the same operation three or four times, according to the quantity, and finally season with olive oil, salt and pepper, and small pieces of butter. Put the pan over the fire, and when it has begun to boil, Pour a small cup of brown stock or broth and a little lemon juice. Remove the same from the fire and pour it on the chicken breast that have been browned as described above. End of section 4 The Italian Cookbook by Maria Gentile This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 46. Wild Duck Anitra Selvatica Clean the duck, putting aside the giblets, and cut off the head and the legs. Chop fine a thick slice of ham with both lean and fat together, with a moderate amount of celery, parsley, carrot, and half medium-sized onion. Put the chopped ham and vegetables in a saucepan, and lay the duck on the whole, seasoning with salt and pepper. Brown on all sides, and add water to complete the cooking. Cabbage or lentils, cooked in water, and afterward allowed to complete the cooking in the sauce obtained from the duck, form a good addition. To remove the gamey taste from the wild duck, 
either wash it in vinegar before cooking or scald it in boiling water 47 stewed squabs piccioni in umido garnish the squabs with whole siege leaves and place them in a saucepan over a bed of small slices of ham containing both lean and fat season with salt pepper and olive oil place on the fire and when they begin to be browned add a piece of butter and complete the cooking by pouring in some good broth before removing from the fire squeeze one lemon over them and garnish with squares or diamonds of toasted bread take care not to add too much salt on account of the ham and the broth both containing salt note many of these dishes it will be noticed are made with broth when meat broth is not available it can be prepared with bouillon cubes or with liebig or armor extracts it is however always preferable to use broth made with fresh meat 48 ragu of squabs manicaretto di piccione cut two or more squabs at the joints preferably in four parts each and put them on the fire with a slice of ham a piece of butter and a bunch of parsley when they begin to dry add some broth and before they are completely cooked there are giblets and fresh mushrooms cut in slices continue pouring in broth and allow the whole to simmer on a low fire add another piece of butter over which some flour has been sprinkled or flour alone before serving remove the ham and a bunch of greens and squeeze some lemon juice over the squabs some sweet bread may be added with good effect but it must be first scalded and the skin removed 49 squab timbal timbalo di piccioni chop together some ham onion celery and carrot add a piece of butter and place on the fire with one or two squabs according to the number of guests add the giblets from the squabs and some more chicken if at hand season with salt and pepper and when the pigeons are browned pour over some broth to complete the cooking taking care however that the sauce does not become too liquid remove the latter and place in it some macaroni that has been half cooked and drained keep the macaroni in the sauce on the fire stirring them make a well reduced bechamel sauce then cut the squabs at the joints removing the neck the legs and the bones of the back when you would not bone them entirely which would be better cut the giblets in small pieces and remove the soft part of the onion when the macaroni have absorbed the sauce season them with grated cheese pieces of butter diamonds or squares of ham a taste of nutmeg and some truffles or dry mushrooms previously softened in water add finally the bechamel sauce and mix the whole take a sufficiently large mold butter it and line it with soft pastry put everything in the mold or timbal cover it with the same pastry and put in the oven take out of the mold and serve hot three quarters of a pound of macaroni and two pigeons are enough for ten persons fifty salmi of game uccelli in salmi roast the game completely seasoning with salt and pepper if the game be small birds leave them whole if big cut them in four parts remove all the heads and grind them together with some pieces of birds or some whole little birds put in a saucepan one tablespoonful of butter one half pound of bacon or ham cut into dice brown stock or broth one tablespoonful each of chopped onion and carrot one tablespoon each of salt thyme and sage allow the sauce to simmer for half an hour then rub it through a sieve and place in it the roasted game make it boil until the cooking is completed and serve with toasted diamonds of bread. 51. Stewed hare. Stufato di lepre. Take half a good sized hare, and after cutting it in pieces, chop fine one medium sized onion, one clove of garlic, a stalk of celery, and several leaves of rosemary. Put on the fire with some pieces of butter, two tablespoonfuls of olive oil, and four or five strips of bacon or salt pork. When the whole has been browning for four or five minutes, put the pieces of hair inside the saucepan and season them with salt, pepper and spices. When it is browned, put a wine glass of white wine, some fresh mushrooms or dry mushrooms previously softened in water. Complete the cooking with broth and tomato sauce and, if necessary, add another piece of butter. 52. Stewed Rabbit Coniglio in umido After washing the rabbit, cut it in rather large pieces and put it on the fire to drive away the water that is to be drained 
When quite dry, put in the saucepan a piece of butter, a little oil, and a hash composed of the liver of the rabbit itself, a small piece of corned beef, and some onion, celery, carrots, and parsley. Season with salt and pepper. Stir often, and when it is browned, add some tomato sauce and another piece of butter. 53. Green sauce. Salsa verde. Chop all together some capers that have been in vinegar, one anchovy, a small slice of onion, and just a taste of garlic. Crush the resulting hash with the blade of a knife to make it very fine. Add a sprig of parsley, chopped together with some leaves of basil, and dissolve the whole in very good olive oil and lemon juice. This sauce is excellent to season boiled chicken or cold boiled fish or hard boiled eggs. Green peppers can take the place of capers if these are not at hand. 54. White sauce. Salsa bianca. This sauce can be served with boiled asparagus or with cauliflower. The ingredients are quarter of a pound of butter, a tablespoonful of flour, a tablespoonful vinegar, one yolk of egg, salt and pepper, broth or water in sufficient quantity. Put first on the fire the flour with half the butter, and when it begins to be browned, pour over it the broth or the water little by little, stirring with the wooden spoon, and adding the rest of the butter and vinegar without making the water boil too much. When taken off the fire, add the yolk of the egg, stir and serve. 55. Yellow sauce. Salsa gialla. This sauce is especially good for boiled fish, and the quantities indicated below are sufficient for a piece of fish or a whole fish weighing about a pound. Put on the fire in a little saucepan one tablespoonful of flour and two ounces of butter, and when the flour begins to be browned, pour over it little by little one cup of the broth of the fish, that is to say of the water in which the fish has been boiled. When you see that the flour does not rise in the boiling water, take away the sauce from the flour and pour over two tablespoonfuls of olive oil and a yolk of an egg, stirring and mixing everything well. Squeeze in the sauce half a lemon and season generously with salt and pepper. Let it cool, and then pour over the fish that is to be served with a sprig of parsley. This sauce must have the appearance of a cream, and must not be too liquid, in order that it may remain attached to the fish. 56. Sauce for broiled fish. Salsa per pesce in gratella. This sauce is composed of yolks of eggs, salted anchovies, olive oil and lemon juice. Boil the eggs in their shell for 10 minutes, and for every hard yolk take one large anchovy or two small. Bone the anchovies, and rub them on the sieve together with the hard or semi-hard yolks, and dissolve all with oil and lemon juice, to reduce it like a cream. Cover with this sauce the broiled fish before sending to the table, or serve aside in a gravy boat. 57. Caper sauce. Salsa con capperi. This sauce is especially adapted for boiled fish, and the quantities are for a little more than one pound of fish. The ingredients are two ounces of butter, two ounces of capers soaked in vinegar, one tablespoonful of flour, salt, pepper and vinegar. Boil the fish and, when it is left warm in its broth, prepare the sauce. Put on the fire the flour with half of the butter, mix it, and when it begins to take color, add the remaining butter. Let boil a little and then pour one half cup of the broth of the fish, season generously with salt and pepper, and take the saucepan from the fire. Then throw in the capers, half whole, half chopped, and some drops of vinegar, but taste it to dose the sauce, so that it is pleasant to the taste, and as thick as liquid cream. It is well to observe here, that these sauces in which butter is used together with acids, such as vinegar, are not for weak stomachs, and should be partaken of sparingly. 58. Genovese sauce. Salsa Genovese. Chop fine a sprig of parsley and half a clove of garlic. Then mix with some capers soaked in vinegar, one anchovy, one hard yolk of egg, three pitless olives, a crumb of bread as big as an egg, soaked in vinegar. Grind all these ingredients, rub through a sieve and dissolve in olive oil, dosing right by tasting. 59. Balsamella sauce. Salsa balsamella. This sauce resembles the famous French bechamel sauce, but it is simpler in its composition. Put in a saucepan one tablespoonful of flour and a piece of butter as big as an egg. 
Stir the flour and the butter together while keeping them over the fire. When the flour begins to be browned, pour over a pint of milk, continually stirring with a wooden spoon until you see the liquid condensed like a cream. This is the balsamella. If it is too thick, add some milk. If too liquid, put back on the fire with another piece of butter dipped in flour. A good balsamella and some well-prepared brown stock are the base and the principal secret of many savory dishes. End of section 5「Cookbook」by Maria Gentile。This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. 60. Curled Omelet. Frittata in riccioli. Boil a bunch of spinach and rub it through a sieve. Beat two eggs, season with salt and pepper, and mix with them enough spinach to make the eggs appear green. Put the frying pan on the fire with only enough oil to grease it, and when very hot, put in a portion of the eggs moving the frying pan so as to make a very thin omelet. When well cooked, remove it from the frying pan and repeat the operation once or twice in order to have two or three very thin omelets. Put these one over the other and cut them in small strips that are to be browned in butter adding a little grated cheese. These strips of omelet, resembling noodles, form a tasty and attractive dressing for a fricando, wheel stew, or a similar dish. 61. Wheel kidney omelet. Frittata di rognone di vitella. Take a wheel kidney, open it lengthwise, and leave all its fat. Season with oil, salt, and pepper. Broil it and cut it in thin slices. Beat enough eggs in proportion to the size of the kidney, season them with salt and pepper, both in moderate quantity, and mix with them a sprig of parsley and some grated cheese. Put the sliced kidney in the eggs, mix all together and make an omelette with some butter. 62. Puff paste. Pasta sfoglia. The pasta sfoglia is not too difficult to make, and if the following instructions are carefully followed, this fine and light paste can easily be prepared. It is well to have a marble slab to roll it on, but this is not absolutely necessary. A warm, damp day is not favorable for the making of the pasta sfoglia, which succeeds better when the weather is cold and dry. Mix half a pound of flour of the very best quality with a piece of butter as big as a walnut, some warm but not hot water, enough salt, and a tablespoonful of good brandy. When the paste is formed, knead it well for about half an hour, first with the hands, then throwing it repeatedly with force against a breadboard. Make a cake of a rectangular form, wrap it in cloth, and let it rest for a while. Meanwhile, work with the hands half a pound of butter, that has been kept previously on ice or better in a bowl of ice water until it becomes smooth and flexible then make of it a little cake like that of the paste and throw it in the bowl of cold water when the dough has rested take the butter from the water wipe it with a cloth and dip it in flour roll the paste only as long as it is necessary to enclose within the cake of butter this is placed in the middle and the edges of the sheet of paste are drawn over it, closing well with fingers moistened in a little water, so that no air remains inside. Then begin to flatten, first with the hands, then with the rolling pin, making the sheet as thin as possible, by taking care that the butter does not come out. If this happens, throw at once a little flour where the butter appears, and always have the marble slab, or breadboard, and the rolling pin sprinkled with flour. Fold it over, making three even layers of paste, and again roll the folded strip, repeating this operation six times, and letting the paste dress from time to time for a few minutes. At the last time, fold it in two, and reduce it to the necessary thickness, that is, about one-third of an inch. After each folding, press the edges gently with the rolling pin to shut in the air, and turn the paste so as to roll it in a different direction. When the paste has had six turns, Cut it into the desired forms and put in ice, or in a cold place for 20 or 30 minutes before putting it in the oven, which must be very hot, with the greatest heat at the bottom. The puff paste is used for pâté shells, and for vent cake, and for light pastries of all kinds. 63. Paste for frying. Pastella per fritto. Dilute 3 tablespoonfuls of flour with 2 tablespoonfuls of oil. Add two eggs, a pinch of salt, and mix well. 
This mixture will take on the aspect of a smooth cream and is used to glaze fried brains, sweetbreads and the like. All these things are first to be scalded in boiling salt water. Add a pinch of salt and one of pepper when taking from the water. The brains, sweetbreads, etc. are then to be cut in irregular pieces, thrown into the paste or cream described above, and fried in oil or good lard. In frying, these are often united to liver or veal cutlets. The liver must be cut in very thin slices, and the cutlets beaten with the side of a big knife, and given a good shape. Season with salt and pepper, dip in beaten egg, and after a few hours, sprinkle with bread crumbs and fry. Serve with lemon. 64. Chicken Stuffing Ripieno di pollo the ingredients are a quarter of a pound of lean veal or pork or breast of turkey and chicken giblets. Cook this meat together with a little hash of onion, parsley, celery, carrot and butter. Season with salt, pepper and spices, moistening it with broth. Take dry from the fire, take off the soft parts of the giblets, add a few dry mushrooms softened in water, a little slice of lean fat ham and chop everything fine. Into the sauce that has remained from the cooking, throw enough bread crumbs to make a tablespoonful of hard soaked bread. Mix it with the chopped hash, add a pinch of grated cheese and two eggs, and fill the chicken with all this, sewing up the opening afterwards. The chicken can be boiled or stewed. If boiled, you will have an excellent bouillon, but pay attention when cutting the chicken to extract the stuffing in one piece in order to slice it. 65. Meat stuffing for volivon. Ripieno di carne per pasticci di pasta sfoglia. This stuffing can be made either with stewed veal or chicken giblets or sweetbreads. The latter are preferable, being more delicate, and the taste of truffles greatly improves the stuffing. If sweetbreads are used, put them on the fire with a piece of butter and season with salt and pepper. When they have begun to take color, complete the cooking with some brown stock then cut them in pieces as little as a bean. Add one or two spoons of balsamella, see number 54, a little tongue, one or two slices of ham cut in little squares, a pinch of grated cheese, and a taste of nutmeg, seeing that the ingredients are in such quantities as to make the mixture tasty and delicate. Leave it cool well, as in this way it hardens and can be worked better. In order to enclose it in pate shells made with puff taste, See number 57. There are two ways. One is to cook the shells filled with the stuffing, the other to fill them after they are cooked. In the first case, put the stuffing in the prepared disc of paste, moisten the edge with a wet finger, cover with another disc of paste and cook. In the second case, which is more convenient because the shells can be prepared one day before, the two discs are put together with the stuffing, but in the upper disc a circular cut must be made as large as a half dollar coin. The pate on cooking swells and leaves an empty space in the interior. Lifting with the point of a knife the little circle above, which has the form of a cover, the interior space can be made larger, filled with the stuffing and covered with the little cover. In this way it is enough to warm them before sending to the table. The puff paste must always be glazed with the yolk of eggs. If a large volivon is to be filled instead of little pate shells, a ragu of chicken giblets and sweet bread, cut in large pieces, is better. 66. Pork liver fried. Fegato di maiale fritto. Cut into thin slices some pork liver, sprinkle with flour, and fry in good lard. It must be served with its sauce. Squeeze in a lemon while it is frying. 67. Fried croquettes, Bologna style. Fritto composto alla bolognese. Take a piece of stewed lean veal, a little brain boiled or stewed, and a slice of ham. Chop and grind everything fine. Add a yolk of egg or a whole egg, according to the quantity, and a little balsamella. See number 54. Put the hash on the fire and stir until the egg is cooked. Add finally grated cheese, a taste of nutmeg, and if you have them, some truffles chopped very fine and put in a plate. When quite cold, make some little balls as large as a walnut and roll them in flour. Then dip in beaten egg and bread crumb ground very fine, repeating the operation twice, and fry. 68. Roman fry. 
Fritto alla Romana 1. Put on the fire a hash of onion and butter, and when it is well browned, cook in it a piece of lean wheel seasoned with salt and pepper. When the meat begins to brown, put in a little sherry wine to complete the cooking. Pound the whole to soften it a little, using the sauce remained, and if this is not enough, add some broth and finally the yolk of an egg. See that the whole is not softened too much. Now take some wafers, not too thin, and cut them in squares, similar to those used by druggists. Beat one egg and divide from the other egg. Then take a wafer, dip in it the egg, and place it on a layer of breadcrumbs ground fine. On the wafer, put a little ball of the compound above, then dip another wafer in the egg. Make it touch the breadcrumbs only from the part that remains outside, and with this, cover the compound attaching to it the lower wafer. Sprinkle again with breadcrumbs if necessary, and put the piece aside, repeating the operation until all the meat is disposed of. Cook in oil or fat, and serve with lemon. With half a pound of meat, about twenty filled wafers should be obtained. 69. Roman Fry 2. This can be made when you happen to have some breast of roast chicken left over. Some chicken breast, two or three slices of tongue and ham, one tablespoonful of grated cheese, a taste of nutmeg are the ingredients used. Remove the skin of the chicken and cut it as well as the tongue and the ham into little cubes. Make a balsamella, see number 54, in sufficient quantity, and when it is cooked, add the above ingredients and let it cool well to fry using the wafer as in the preceding. 70. Rice Pancake Fritella di riso Cook thoroughly a quarter of a pound of rice in about a pint of water, giving it taste with a little piece of sugar and a taste of lemon peel. Leave it cool and then add three yolks of eggs and a little flour. Mix well and let the whole rest for several hours. When you are going to fry, beat the white of an egg to a froth, add to it the rice and throw into the frying pan one tablespoonful at a time. Serve hot sprinkled with confectionery sugar. End of section 6